Is this the future of live mixing? Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, I'm Johnny from Worship Sound Guy, and today I got to spend some time with Apple's new Vision Pro virtual reality system. And now, before you at me, I didn't buy it, Worship Sound Guy didn't buy it, my church didn't buy it. I had a friend who had one and he let me use it for a little while. Using it really made me start thinking about the future. What are all these emerging technologies like virtual reality, augmented reality, and artificial intelligence mean for us as church audio engineers and production techs? Are these new types of techs going to be useful to us? And if so, how would that even work? In the time I spent playing around with the Vision Pro, I already thought of quite a few ideas. But before we get to that, if you're enjoying this video and you want to see more content like it, go ahead, hit those little like and subscribe button so YouTube knows to show you more videos like this. And see, just like that, you're already putting technology to work for you. Way to go. Now, let's take a trip back to ancient times, back when things looked a little different than they do now, back when everyone had analog mixing boards. Now, I know you're probably saying, Johnny, that wasn't that long ago. And you're right, sort of. The first digital mixing console was actually released in 1987 by Yamaha. It was called the DMP-7, and it featured a robust eight channels and a three-band EQ. It was a little different than what we have today. Now, while that means we've technically had digital mixing consoles for almost 40 years, it wasn't until a lot later that most churches would make the switch from analog to digital. When I first started mixing professionally around 2010, most of the churches I worked with had large format analog consoles. It wasn't until a few years later when I started seeing churches adopt early Avid consoles like the SC48 and the D-Show, as well as Digico's SD range. The churches that were making those upgrades at the time were on the cutting edge of adopting digital mixing technology. But most churches were still on analog. It wasn't until the Behringer X32 came on the scene in the summer of 2012 that digital consoles finally became accessible for many churches, especially smaller and mid-sized churches. In fact, according to some recent research, it wasn't until 2019 that most churches, meaning just more than 50%, had moved to digital mixers for their main worship environments. So for a technology that already feels so commonplace and normal, it hasn't really even been around that long. The speed at which new technology is being developed has increased nearly exponentially over the last few decades. We've gone from TVs and microwaves to the internet and VR within a single lifetime. With technology advancing at that rate, what does that mean for us? Full disclosure, I'm kind of a technology nerd. I love new tech and new equipment, but I also understand that some of you probably don't feel the same way, particularly about this kind of stuff. Certain aspects of these technologies could be fundamentally changing the way we do things when it comes to audio mixing, and that can be challenging to think about. We work in the overlap of technology and creativity. We use very complex technological tools, but then we use them to make music and art. And music is personal, it's subjective, it's experiential, and it's creative. How would you feel if the technology was doing more of the creating than you were? Well, I've got good news and bad news depending on your perspective. It's already happening. We're already seeing AI, neural networks, and machine learning being used in audio technology. Right now, we're seeing it mostly in audio processing plugins. A great example of this is Sonable's Smart EQ processor, which uses AI to, as they say, correct spectral issues and achieve tonal balance. Uh, basically, it'll EQ for you using AI. So I haven't tried it and I have no idea if it works, but what's important to understand is the technology is coming and we as audio engineers have to be ready for it. Historically, the live audio world has always been a few years behind the studio recording world in terms of technology adoption. So we're likely a little while away from seeing those features available natively on major consoles. But when it does come, 
What could it be like? I have a few predictions. First, I think we're gonna see a lot of time-saving features that use AI. Things like being able to quickly set up a console based on what instruments the console detects. Like, you could have the band start playing and the console might automatically label and arrange itself for you based on what it detects coming through each channel. Beyond that, I think we'll start seeing lots of auto EQ technologies. Like we talked about with Sonable's Smart EQ plugin, I think there's a very obvious opportunity for console tech that automatically applies basic EQ or other effects to your mix. I'm imagining technology like that only getting better and better over the next few years as algorithms get better and more refined. But what about something like virtual or augmented reality? While I was using the Vision Pro, it was extremely easy for me to display any window from my computer through the headset in augmented reality. I could still see what was going on around me, but I could also see a floating computer window that I could interact with. So it would be possible right now to have additional console windows or Waves plugins or just about anything else you can display on a computer that could appear in augmented reality. Now, I don't see myself mixing with the VR headset on anytime soon, but the potential is there. And it's undeniable that tech like this will be used in the church world sooner rather than later. The real question is not, will it happen? But how far will it go? And I'm sure a lot of you are probably already thinking, oh, it'll go too far. And maybe those concerns have some merit, but there's something I've been asking myself a lot recently. What do I really love about running sound? In asking that question, I've realized that it's not actually that I love a particular part about the technical aspects of mixing. Like, I don't wake up on a Sunday morning and think, oh man, I get to EQ a vocal today. I can't wait to use that high shelf. And it's not even really about how the mix sounds on a technical level. I've never left church on a Sunday thinking, wow, all my compressors were really set perfect today. Those drum reverbs, they just had the perfect pre-delay settings. Probably none of us do that, right? I've realized that what I love about running sound and mixing is that it's an expression of creativity. I bet that's true for most of us. It's like the same way a painter doesn't paint because they love the color blue or because they own nice brushes. We don't run sound because we love EQ or because we have microphones. We run sound because we get to help create and participate in an artistic experience. I love the art that I get to help create, not simply the technical process itself. And because of that, what I love about mixing isn't something that technology can ever take away from me. My enjoyment of running sound is based on the creative, artistic expression of worship that I'm a part in creating. If I had to guess, I bet that's true for you too. So next time you hear about how some new technology might seem to take away part of what you do or make it too easy, I want you to carefully consider whether it's actually affecting the part of it that you love to do, or if it's just another tool to carefully and responsibly use. For me, I'm excited about what the future holds, and I think we're on the verge of some truly exciting technology. I can't wait to see what's next. But now, I want to hear from you. Are you excited about all this VR, AR, AI, or are you a little apprehensive about it? How do you think it could be used in audio technology or production tech? Let me know down in the comments and let's talk about it. Until next time, happy mixing. Before you go, if you're a church audio engineer, I have something just for you. Odds are you wanna get better at what you do. That's why you're here on YouTube watching nerdy production videos, right? So I've put together a series of online courses. They're on our website at worshipsoundguide.com. They cover everything from the fundamentals of running sound to more advanced techniques. There are even console specific courses, master classes, and an entire community filled with church texts for you to join. Go check it out at worshipsoundguide.com and I'll see you there.